Good morning. Day 60. Two full months on the trail, essentially. Wow. All right. Well, all packed up at our campsite. Our, I only put the plural because other people were here. Um, all packed up. I'm ready to go. Going to head out. It's about uh, an eight-mile trek to the quarterway in the hostel uh so that's good nice place to spend the night take a shower uh, clean up organize pack and everything like that so eight 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 miles should be early afternoon by the time i get there <clears throat> excuse me so that being said it was a nice morning with the sun coming up, hearing the roosters on the farms. So, um, going to get going. And as usual, I'll bring you all the good stuff. There we go. How exact it is, I can't tell you because, of course, the trail changes from time to time. But one quarter away. All right. So, I'm two months on the trail. I'm quartered away. That's eight month trail. Got to step up my game. I guess that means. Now, you can see all the trees are really moving into leafing out. Pretty soon we're going to have a pretty complete canopy. Not so, a little slower on the higher elevations, but down in these valleys, everything's green. And... All right. Trail's been a little up and down, a lot of little knobs. So, uh, haven't seen much to show you. Uh. Excuse me, but if it's good, you'll see it. Just came through that saddle right there. So I think the rest of the way is downhill. I came up here and I stopped for a moment. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. But I can hear a continuous hum of all the insects buzzing, especially bees. Pretty amazing. This collection of fiddleheads. All 
Just amazed by the buzz sound, the hum of all the wings. It's getting time. Oh, it's got to be close to like 80 today. Minimum 75 in the shade. 80 with the sun beating on you. Tell you, it's hot. Uh, it's getting that time of year where you can't step over logs without looking on the other side. Snakes will be out soon. So, those little critters like to tuck themselves under logs. So, sweep them with your poles or step on the log or rock and a big step away from it on your next one. Just a word to the wise. I'm going to start making tracks down the hill. Hopefully I'll have some place nice and cool I can soak my feet. There's a nice black cherry. Two foot in diameter. And three. Probably one of the first trees on here. Around here. And it was abandoned farm probably. Shagbar kickeries. This one and that one. There's another one right there, shag bark. A lot of them here. I stopped here because I've been noticing more and more black locust. It has these very deep troughs and high ridges crisscross and zigzagging up and I'll talk more about black locust in a minute Whoop. but I want to give you another example of phototrophism that locust fell on that that tree right there and the branches and the branches take off toward the sun all these are branches from that tree that got knocked over. They're all reaching up for the sun. Sorry about that. Someone asking about water up ahead. All right. So phototrophism, going toward the light. All right. Talking about black locust. Uh, not much to say. It's often used for furniture because it's got so it's a, it's a bear to split it's got so many cross fibers in it so it's often used for furniture like uh, recliners and stuff just because it's so strong and resistant to splitting uh can i think what else it's not a big tree none that i've ever seen are well i can think of does have a little greenish color to the wood. So, the other thing I've been seeing a lot of along the last mile, remember these? 
opposite branching. See the opposite branching? <laughs> Sorry, here's a wind. Where's chestnut? Remember? A lot of them. There are a couple big trees. Speaking of big trees, that's a big sugar maple. Look at the size of that. It's got to be uh, two, maybe three feet in diameter. All right. Let me finish this last mile out. And then I got about three tenths of a mile road walk to the hostel. There's a big sugar maple. Three foot, but unfortunately it's rotting. The whole row of them was not uncommon for them to plant them along driveways and such. white of the dogwoods old abandoned farm oh this is a good spot where I could talk to you about succession ecological succession that refers to the changing of the communities both plant and animal communities that occur in an area over time all this was probably old farmers field right which indicates that whatever was here before trees forests were uh gotten rid of so we can call that a uh, uh <laughs> ecological disaster no um a, a devastating event that that resets the uh the uh, process <clears throat> so here you have a farmer's field or whatever hay we'll, we'll say it's a hay field it's all grasses and stuff well as the grasses grow hang on i got a bug on me as the grasses grow they actually change the environmental conditions that are out there grasses are real sun loving they do well with very little water uh hot temperatures all right so but as they grow they create shade they help moisture be retained inside in the soil and stuff like that which allows other plants to come in and seed in such as the briars and and even sun loving trees uh those trees or those first plants that colonize an area we call them pioneer species uh, as related to the pioneers who colonized America. They went to places where they were, no one was before and they built it up and they grew communities. Well, that's what happens with uh, open land. So what happens is other plants come in over the grasses and as you can see, like right under these briars, or create shade. Well, the grasses don't like shade. So the grasses under there will die out. I got someone coming, so I'll get back to you. All right. So the grasses change the community and, or the, the, the ecology of the spot and other plants were able to come in. Now those plants are changing the, uh, the uh, environmental conditions there. So now the grasses are being shaded out. All right. So what we have is we have a lot of pioneer species that come in, like aspen trees, dogwoods, black cherries or sun loving. They come in, they have light seeds, some birches. Uh, they can come in, colonize an area, and as they grow, they change the conditions in the area. 
so that the next group of trees grow or the next community of plants I should say so in that shade we'll get more shade tolerant species growing because in the shade the ground might stay moist longer uh, less sun gets to it so plants that are less or more shade tolerant not less sun loving uh, more shade tolerant can grow in and eventually those plants will grow out and over say these pricker bushes and shade them out so the process is a constant change from one community of one group of plants to another group of plants and with those plants come different uh, um, non-plants uh, animals insects things like that so what you have is one community of plants and animals succeeding another plant community and and, and eventually you'll get trees and like that which create even more shade and eventually get forests now once the forests start growing you know the first trees up and out will be the sun loving trees because they have access to the sun but in the shade of that forest in the canopy canopy referring to all the leaves that are blocking the, that reach the sunlight uh you only get very shade tolerant trees sugar maples beech yellow birch until those trees start outgrowing the sun-loving trees and shading them out. Now, currently, uh, beech, birch, maple are considered climax forests, and they were allowed to expand because the chestnuts disappeared. But even under beech, birch, and maple, you can get stuff like hemlocks growing up, uh, as long as they're not beat up by the Yadelges. So there's always something going on. Now at any time, that can all be reset by fire, which could burn everything down to, to bare ground and grasses can come in again and sun loving trees and things like that. So it's a constant evolution of different communities and we'll have different, re re it'll reset and restart based on what happens whether it's man cutting a forest down or a farmer coming in and planting crops and then abandoning it things like that bat six just showed me something hanging out on this sugar maple looks like a black racer let me see if i can give you a little closer view Alright. There's some more fence posts over here. Not too many left, but old chestnut fence posts. Alright. I'm here. At the quarter way in, and I want to show you this sycamore tree. Remember, it's got the white, brown, and green bark. It looks like it's peeling, like it's sick sycamore. But I'm looking at the size of this trunk. One, two, three. It's got to be six feet or more in diameter. Amazing. Look at that. And it's an old, nice federal size style house. Amazing size of that tree. Right, come around. And I'll show you the inside in a second. If you want, there's a fire ring down there. You can go light a fire and hang out. Hang out on the deck. And let me take you inside. Come into an enclosed porch and you have to take your shoes off. Or at least your hiking shoes. You wear your camp shoes. 
Oh, is it not muddy? My phone. Sorry, I forgot that. That's okay. Here's the kitchen and dining area for guests. A reasonable resupply. A bunch of freeze dries and foods. We keep track on a little credit sheet. That's puppy. I'll show you the bunk room upstairs, but there's a common area here for guests. A bunch of tapes you can watch. Stuff like that. Which I'm going to enjoy in a little bit. And then, I'll take you up to the bunk room. Shower up here, shower in the back. Oh, shower downstairs. This is one of the private rooms. This is the bunk room. That's my mess. It's all laid out. No upper bunks, which is nice. And... Semi-private single. Uh, Semi-private double. Excuse me. Very nice. Well laid out, well decorated. Very cozy and comfortable. 